Howdy. So, I have, let me check this mic. There we go. Slightly different settings. We'll see if it blows anyone's ears out. Uh, I've got some priming to do. And then I still have to paint this guy after I prime it. You still see a little bit of blue hiding in there. I'm not too worried about it. Um, I didn't like the first attempt at paint. Do see some stuff. I got a tweezer out of there though. Uh, so I washed it off. Somewhat mixed results. We're gonna have round two, which is gonna be uh, the purple that I used on a bunch of the rest of the model. It's more consistent. I like it. The first blue I did wasn't really a big fan of, uh, but the second blue I am a bigger fan of, and it, uh, it features pretty prominently. Uh, and it is on the other weapon, the claw. Uh, so this weapon, whatever freaking kind of freeze mech weapon it is, uh, this one's going to get uh, the purple that I used on other parts of the body. The head will also get some purple, and we'll chrome stuff up. I'm pretty much at assembly at that point. Uh, three mechs, uh, each with slightly... Now uh, these guys' two poses are pretty much identical. One of them has the, the saw blade up. Uh, and then this guy was my texturing test model, but man, if I just put an arm and a uh, head on him, he's a death guard. Likewise, I was using this guy for texture tests, but I like him too much and I love the flail. So I'm gonna retire him from test texture model duty, prime him up and uh, we'll get to him sometime soon. Wanna make sure I've got stuff to do. I'm hopefully moving out of here in exactly two weeks. Um, or at least closing. So having some smaller scale projects uh, would be nice to have. Um, so I can just sort of fiddle around a bit while things move. I did some moving of clothing earlier today, uh, some packing. I'm dreading packing this whole house up, but it is what it is. So out the gate, we're gonna glove up. I got, you can see the hood, it's gonna be venting air out. I don't think I'm gonna wear the mask because I'm only priming and I only live once. Um, and I find that this thing pretty much kicks primer out the window. No problem. Uh, I will mask up later if I do get to any of the acrylic varnishes because those things, they do vent out, but good lord, that's like hallucinogenic good times. All right, have a sip of tea and we'll get down to it. On my proctology exam gloves. Let's see if this light will hit anything. All right, whatever. Too much fiddling. All right, I have to mix up some primer with some thinner. I'm going to use the workhorse airbrush today. That being the Master airbrush. Uh, pretty much anything goes through here. Famous last words. Check this thing. <laughs> What's up, mate? How the heck are you? me right as I'm having issue taking umbrage with my airbrush. It's good to see you, buddy. I really hope I didn't jack this thing up. Hmm. Are you in, in an off again phase of work?
Last night shifts. Sweet. Right, maybe I'm not using this airbrush. Close them up. Man, this is like back of the Christie novel. My airbrushes independently go down one on one, eventually forcing me to a final showdown. again. Maybe I cleaned it out. I think there's something glunky in there. Alright, that seems better. I have the next three days off. Work for Monday through Thursday. And I am another seven day break. Well, oh. more power to you. I've had moments where I wonder if that kind of shift schedule would suit me a little better these days in terms of taking care of kids, being able to like give my wife more concrete amounts of sections of time off like right now she's basically on kid duty from like morning till dinner time then i make dinner and then they're in bed by eight that's pretty stressful for her but i think every schedule's got its own issues yeah i hit this a little bit more get to paint anything recently now it gets loud at 2,000 points. Six, I'm two cat, two cat. No, 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 if I said that, that I was thinking of something entirely different from making crap up in my life. But I'm almost at 2000. Almost at 2000. It is a spray booth. The wonderful sounds you hear in the background is the spray. It does. It goes uh, straight out the window. Uh, you can actually set it up with a longer tube and have it vent back into the room, which I've seen some people do. It's like, it's viable. I would probably want to filter it a bit more, but yeah, it goes straight out the window and it goes down uh, into a wedge. So you get a decent amount of suction out of, uh, out of the back of the whole thing. It's got a filter in there. Um, if I only use this to prime, oh, 6K total? Yeah, I am close to 6K total. Close. I'm probably at five, five and a half. The points changes recently actually went in my favor so I can add stuff to my armies. 
Um, but, uh, but yeah, uh, I love it. It's not very durable, but it does what it's supposed to do. The, uh, the vent hood thing. And it allows me to prime inside. I live in New England, so, like, it's cold out now. Last night I actually skipped on it because it was, like, 20 degrees and having the window open at all was, like, ugh. Yeah, you're right. All right, Dad. You're 100% correct. I'm probably going to mask up later anyway when I do the freaking lacquer. You're right. I'm not so good with my lung health. But I could be better. I basically need a chaperone to run this stream. But hey, mate, when you're right, you're right. <laughs> Thank you so very kind. <laughs> that possible. At the rate I'm going, uh, 23rd Army, like, I'll probably be like seven and a half years. I'm going to slow down a little bit. At some point, I have to. That's absolutely the case, and you're definitely not the first person who's told me that. Uh, I'm getting faster at a lot of things, but now I start to care a little bit more about some techniques that I didn't care at all about before. I was over hanging out at, uh, at Buddy Minis, and I was telling him that I found it very relaxing to watch him do edge highlighting that I still never do. The guy's really good, but I was like, man, that is not for me right now. Someday maybe, but not today. Hmm. I'm just going to have to sit here a little bit. 
kind of sort of standard with these, considering for one thing and probably the same thing. <laughs> It'd be funny. I mean, at some point, I gotta do a tournament. I'm gonna let this guy sit for a minute so that I can take him off of the, my extra set of hands and uh, get some response I couldn't reach before, but that just seemed to, to make some sense. Swing him up. And when I do that, I'll put this guy on and I can get his, his bits I couldn't reach before either. It's, uh, it's pretty funny because like, I would, the bar that they set when you actually like make games for phones for like a large company, is just a lot. I get some tea in here. The bar you set when you're trying to make like AAA mobile games, so not like, you know, Assassin's Creed on a console, but still like AAA stuff, like the bar is really high in terms of like UI, UX, functionality, consistency, all this stuff. Um, like I work on a team of a lot of people and like if we wanted to do like a 40K app, um, it'd be like child's play. Like there's not, there's not really any money in it, I don't think, but um, like I couldn't pay all those people to do it, but it'd be obscene. That said, I would love to make a 40k themed game at some point. Someday. Someday. I might wait till I, I don't know, sometime a decade from now, start start a studio. If I can find anyone who can front the money to do it and uh, figure out who I gotta reach out to at Games Workshop to license their crap. They don't like it when you call it crap, I imagine. Alright, so these look pretty good. Just give this a couple more seconds to just chill out on those clips. <sighs> good, good tea. Alright. So, you'll notice I'm already handling it. It's not the greatest idea. I wouldn't use my thumbs because they'd leave prints on it. But when you're airbrushing primer on, you go pretty thin. Um, all you're doing is giving some some material for the paint to stick to it dries pretty quick it's still a little damp on the inside of there i can see it also under these lights which are like oppressive but that makes them good um but yeah it doesn't take long i'm actually almost certainly going to paint this thing tonight i have to dry brush it first um right after is probably not a great idea, but uh, I'm not a very patient person. It's not going to ruin anything. 
Games Workshop does struggle with that. They do struggle. I will bring them there. Cooking and streaming. Uh, as always, trying to clean this bad boy up. I'm gonna be masked first. Then later, when I get down to serious biz. my glasses because I always mess my glasses up every single time I do that but so I did I actually did use a lot of that up to this point um, very specifically though on this gun I had used it there I don't think it's gonna be all that necessary I'm getting a little bit in tighter with airbrushing I may because it's a big chunky piece I may hit it with some putty instead um, but on this guy, I basically like hit inside that door, um, hit all the way around here and then got the front doors and this part I went all the way around there. Um, and then the next night after everything was peeled off and ready, um, <laughs> yeah, uh, it was part of it. Uh, I then redid it the other way and it actually worked out pretty well. Um, but what I did find is for pieces that are like intricate like this, it was too much of a pain to pluck the stuff out. Like here's here's my evidence, like apparently there's still a little bit of it in there. I think I blew around with the airbrush. There's a tiny little bit in there. Yeah. Um, so I'll go around this thing with putty. And that'll be, I'm convinced that'll be better. Uh, but I, I did use it to, to pretty darn good effect. All right, water. So we have water. First one of these is just to shake things up. Put a lot of time in, dude. I'm uh, cranking. But I, I appreciate that. It is, uh, a lot of it is just, is time served and not being afraid to try stuff out, whether it works or not. Um, and like, like the case is with this, you know, liquid mask stuff I was using, like some spots it was really, really awesome for, and some spots it really, really sucks. Um, so now I know where I want to use it. <laughs> it's so it's like it's such cheap it's like the the new version of that old adage like if you want the right answer go on the internet and say the wrong answer like if you want to learn I mean, that's the thing is there's a lot of people in this community they're absolutely just happy to teach um, and they don't all agree on everything like some people have their own favorite glue some people have their own favorite paint companies but uh, 
I'm absolutely willing to try stuff out. And, you know, they're, they're my toy soldiers. So, like, I can live with a certain amount of me learning as I go. I like to look back at the ones that I started with and, like, hmm, I've come a long way. If you give yourself the freedom to sort of, like, I'm not a perfectionist. Just, I'm just, I'm almost anti-perfectionist. I don't like it when things are perfect. Yep. There is no right answer. So, if you embrace that, you get a lot of shit done. While there's no one right answer, there are definitely several. And I like that part of it. You know, different people just have had different experiences with the hobby. Oh yeah. I find it totally cool. Like, I was looking at some guy's Instagram today, um, and a bunch of orcs, and a bunch of commandos. So, like, I'm like, yeah, I'm hyped, because I love commandos. What he was doing with those commandos, totally different. I mean, one, he had a legit style, but, like, I mean, I have a, a thing I'm doing, but, like, he had a lot more consistency than I have, but also just... Um, just a very different take on what those guys can look at like and obviously like i'm throwing chrome on mine so i'm not talking about that part just everything from like skin tone to the clothing everything was super soft they did and i was like that's absolutely amazing like i want to learn about that i don't know how much i'll adopt that but i'm gonna take these gloves off for a little bit I'm sweating in them um but Yeah, it's a, it's a really, really good crew. Like the models are awesome. They're all very different. My two units of them I did, I basically did a variant each one. So like the one that's gonna go with Boss Snickrot is like all the specialists. And my other one that I built out is, uh, is all the normal guys. It's all the, all the variants that don't have like the crazy ones. So it's almost all, it's, I think it's, almost all melee. I think I had to have like one guy with a semi-special gun. Um, and maybe because like they look different enough where now I have like a whole crew. I got 20 of them now that have their own look. I imagine that Kill Team, I hope that whoever came up with Kill Team like got an award of some sort. Like, apparently, like, was it the Geller Pox Death Guard guys were like a kill team, I think, was it? Or was Geller Pox something else? But like, it's a really good idea. It's like a bite-sized box of really cool stuff. It has the kill team rules going for it, but then you get if you're playing standard 40k, you get an interesting unit of guys. Yeah. That, um, it looks pretty cool. Like, I'm not really a Space Marine Scouts or Eldari Striking Scorpions person, but the models are cool, and I think a lot of people are going to, like, dig it. And you get a lot of neat sculpts out of it, which is awesome for everybody. But like the local store that I go to, they're always having, there's always kill team tournaments going on. And you think about like tables and time. If you want to run tournaments, like kill team's pretty decent. They're having a lot of turnover. All right, what in Sam Heck did I say I was gonna do next? Oh, that's right, I can set this thing aside because I need to dry brush first. 
my continual hustle. And I'm going to dry brush. Hmm. Hmm. Exactly what am I going to do? Well, it's going to be metallic on some of them. It may just be a little bit of white or off-white for the Death Guard crap. That sounds like a plan. I'll get my Death Guard boys out of the way first. Ah! Is that where, like, the rogue trader retinue guys came from, too? Because I might actually get those dudes. Oh, crap. I gotta look up how much that box possibly costs on the internet, but... That was actually a guess about. Well, no, you said it. You you said it was, team box. It wasn't a complete guess, but like I thought the rogue trader retinue guys looked very kill teamy. Streamlabs, are you having a seizure? What's like this dollar sign business? Streamlabs been bugging lately. All right, let me. My dashboard. You okay, buddy? Labs, you poor thing. Cloudbot, you got a name? Let me hit a button, see what happens. Point. Whatever. Technical difficulties, always. Earth. Earth. That's spicy. 200 bucks on eBay can potentially get you a lot. The problem is I, I want the stuff in the box. I want to snip it out. I want to build it myself. I've got standards. Back. I gotta, <laughs> gotta trade this water out. It's garbage. Gross. So it was the it was the box like uh, like the starter set box where it had the four panel fold out terrain thing and tiny bits. Because uh, with with commandos, I got all three versions. I got the commandos standalone, just them box. I got the starter set, which is the four panel thing with the the toss down terrain, and I got the Octarius set, the big boy. Um, I actually have another Octarius lying around. That might be a gift for a friend. We'll see. If I can uh, keep myself from using it. Maybe a 
be There we go. Nurgling green. Try to rinse this brush off again in clear water. God, that stuff was gnarly. so dope well the thing is i need i need parts like after i finish finish this orc army i'm kit bashing a stomp and some of that terrain it's like you could just like saw through a certain section of it and it's like a great torso piece or like one of those tanks it's like a great shoulder like fluid gas holding tanks like there's a lot there i think i need a bigger brush I do. This one's a little too tiny for what I'm doing. That guy is soak. Spa day. I'm gonna pull out a bigger brush. Let me pull the brush out in a while. Got a lot of them. Yeah, this guy is good. It is a really good set. Like, I feel a little bit, I say I don't have a pile of shame, but like I do have a whole Octarius box just like chilling. Most of what I say is terribly inaccurate anyway. So this is all gonna get like, Pretty thoroughly painted over, but I now dry brush on almost everything where I paint it. Um, just to bring some of the texture up so that while I'm staring at it, bleary eyed at one in the morning, like you can't fool me, Death Guard. Little tiny spikes sticking out, all that good stuff. So you know, this is just an off green. The color doesn't matter that much. I'll actually even hit this because this will all get metallics over it. But I find with my old beat up wizard eyes, it's just easier to paint your dry brush. You get a little bit of free highlighting out of it. Not a ton. I don't use crazy amounts of contrast paint, but even with solids, stuff shows through. Which is why I started using couple of these models as texture and paint test models there's so much stuff going on like this one guy I could pull out like uh, actually it was on this guy <clears throat> I was testing reds for my night oh good lord buy it now free shipping link copy it paste it my other browser yeah 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 see February twentieth what day is today hmm hmm Pretty neat. Mm. I'm just typing a couple things. Nothing, nothing to worry about.
Done. I am a sucker for an impulse buy. I know I will paint all of that stuff. I'm pretty good about... about having not too big a backlog, but knowing that it's got the Rogue Trader guys in it too. Mm. So the thing is, I am eventually down the road going to do a trader guard army. Maybe not 2,000 points, we'll see. But I know that I can put some agents in it. And like, I like the Rogue Trader models quite a bit. It's a solid play. Maybe not the best play I could have made, but I got no regrets. I'll, I'll take it. That works for me. It'd be the funniest thing ever if, like, you were the guy selling it. Every time you log in, you're just like, oh, you like this thing? Here's a link to eBay. It'd be, it'd be a sweet play. Hey, what's up, JMB? I just bought some stuff. I don't even remember what it's actually... What is it actually called, Knight? What is it? I'm going to scroll back up here. Team Rogue Trader. Yeah, that's what I uh, that's what I just ordered. I put my money where my mouth is, Jambi. I'm not just making you buy other stuff. It was kind of a speak of the devil moment that you just showed up. I literally just on eBay, pulling the trigger. I mean, there's some dope models in there. There's like painfully dope models. I think you're, uh, I think you're consuming yourself too much with my ability to pay attention to where I got anything from. <laughs> oh well, good for you. I got a wet palette. Love it. That's great news. And made a wooden handle for holding minis as well. Baller. Dude, you're like. You are so on board, I love it. <sighs> good, good stuff. All right, and I said I was gonna dry brush metallics on this other crop. If I remember correct, I did a little mix and match last time. So I want to do that again. It's just going to be a tiny amount of white added to whatever silver metallic I used, which was plata. It's green off of this brush.
Well, I make cutting boards, so it's a cut off. I took spoke shave, knock off the corner. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, I will say this: having having some woodworking skill in this line of hobby is uh, helpful. Uh, I do care about old rule books. Care a lot about old rule books. <laughs> I have, I wouldn't say a full shelf, but I have a lot of craftsman worky kind of stuff that is buried in my current garage and is going into a proper workshop in my next place. That proper workshop in the next place will actually be the same place that I do this crap with a camera at. So. I will have access to a lot more. Uh, and on top of that, it'll be my, my wife's workshop as well. My wife has a bunch of acrylic stuff because she does painting. Like, there are some times where I need something to, to paint Warhammer and I, like, scurry over to my wife's setup and, like, can I borrow this? I'm just mixing Plata with some white. I'm going to add one more drop of it. That gives you like super silver, which I found the rest of the model. Like you could see the like brushed metal stuff through this. And I like that. You can see it through with the purple as well. So I'm doing that again. This will come off on here pretty strong, but that's a-okay. Um, and especially testing on this spiky stuff, like that'll all be chrome at some point anyhow. I'm not trying to do the super, like, light dry brush here. I'm literally trying to add, like, brush texture underneath everything. want to make sure that I hit as best I can. I have a little bolts and things that stick out. Some of those are just get a super light dab. This is like, yeah, I'm using a dry brush, but I'm not trying to like just feather it. They're, they're good brothers. They're happy boys. I mean, the next big thing to do is after all this, I'm going to take their bases and I'm going to sit them off to the side on each one so that the bases next to each other have some sort of semi-narrative thing happening between the two of them. It might just be like a blown out bunker or something like that. Uh, might just be like some cityscape ruin kind of stuff, but I figured like I could basically base them like this and get maybe a quarter of each base together 
do something neat. They are going to look pretty gnarly together. And then obviously alone they'll still look fine. It'll just be cityscapey crap. When you put them together, their Wonder Twin powers will activate. I can't wait to just have those guys rushing downfield. Selling some craziness. Now, I don't need to be super gentle here either. I mainly want to hit the metallic stuff. But the skin and the clothing are going to get an actual legit coat of gray on them. That's where I start with I use a bit of contrast and shade paint for each of them. So I don't have to be super careful, but there's no reason to just like gunk this whole guy. If I overshoot in a spot here or there, no biggie. Who has a rhino or company <laughs> they fought over? That's actually interesting because, uh, <laughs> not a bad thought. Um, they're each going to have the claw arm on the opposing arm, which means I could do it so that these arms are both on the inside and it could be like, each have a bit of something in it. That's not a bad thought. And then put like some bits on the ground on both of them. It's not terrible. I mean, that's me buying a whole model just to base with. But considering I, I still could, I still ponder getting the Gilliman model and just taking, taking his head that doesn't have the helmet on it and like gilding it and turning it into a necklace for my Knight Tyrant. Maybe not that crazy. I have weird thoughts sometimes. But yeah, them them sort of fighting over a toy, psh, that is like pretty sweet. Yeah, I, that's what I'm thinking. It's like that's a, a absolutely solid just eBay one up that is like been through the wars that someone's just tired of. So the, uh, the points changes update was like two or three weeks ago. Actually hit me pretty well in, in a few spots, like in a good way. So it means more work to get to 2,000 point armies. Um, several of the vehicles that are in this army uh, got points drops, which is awesome. So I have some room to breathe. I decided to drop down to, for now, two units of commandos instead of three. 
and then pull in some mechs because I have so many vehicles. Gotham Mech Boy Workshop. I feel like some amount of repairs will be fun. And I love the model. So I might might need to pick up some tank busters because they're still on theme. <laughs> I mean, my Typhus is like walking over a dead Ultramarine and Furnace guy and has his head in his open hand. Like, because the Typhus model, one of his hands is just like, ah, it's like perfectly helmet sized. I need, I need to find an Ultramarine's buddy who can rival eyes on models. I think it's just great. It's like such good sportsmanship. Yeah, me and my buddy Will may get to that point. I may have to start. And that's entirely the kind of thing that I would get started. <clears throat> He's working on um, shorties. Uh, Hearthkin. And uh, you know, I got I got my Death Guard. At some point, I will probably pick up some sort of Votan model and just work it into something. Like, I still need to build build and paint some Terminators, so maybe just some, like... Uh, his, his army is Lisa Votan, so... Uh, at least his, his first army seems pretty addicted at this point, so... When this... This dude, Will, is like my, my buddy from way back. I didn't have to twist his arm all that much. I had him come over a couple times and play some combat patrol. He used my sister's patrol and I have the Death Guard one. But like, I know I need to pick up some, probably pick up some Death Guard Sherman, Shermanators? Terminators sometime soon. You get like three of them, I think. So like, splitting up the pieces of some semi-famous Lisa Votan guy and sp sprinkling them on all three bases. Just waiting for the recognition to set in. Steal his paint scheme. That kind of stuff of just like, hmm. And like he's got his own like kind of not the box paint scheme going. Like if I replicate that a little bit, it's like it's like the ultimate compliment. I gotta pull some of these guys out of here. It's gonna get loud and proud again. I am going to do first. So I don't worry about things that are gonna be chromed up. Uh, in terms of getting uh, this lacquer on them, because chrome goes over everything. Um, but I am going to putty up this this armature. Armi it's not an armature, it's a piece of an arm. Uh -oh. But this head, on the other hand, like is pretty much only going to be painted this color and chrome, so I don't need to cover anything up on this guy. Alright, this is where things get a little squirrely. I may play it a little fast and loose with, with primer. Um, for small tasks. But the stuff I'm about to use is like legit dangerous. It's awesome. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. Like, and Death Guard are so perfect for it, especially because like Pox Walkers are cheap. And the Death Guard use them for that. I mean, they literally use them to clog up enemy vehicles. Like, I was tempted to put some Pox Walkers in front of the Dozer Blade on my Fig Burst Crawler. Because they, like, they, like, just drive over their own shit. I don't care. Alright, I'm gonna re-glove up. Absolutely. And like, a sprue of pox walkers is 
Like, I'm tempted to just get a sprue of Poshwalkers to use them in my own bases. Because, like, you can have them, like, crawling out of the ground underneath some named guy. And it still looks cool. It's all, it's all in build stuff. Alright, so. Now we get into the party section of this. Did I mix something? Now I gotta remember whether or not I mixed something. I don't think I did. I thought I, I think I considered it, and then went straight up. I should get a sprue of pot swatches off of eBay. Like they're just they're they're so good. Like an individual like a head and an arm sticking out. It's kind of like uh, Necrons are really good like that too. Like I have arms and heads sticking out of my diorama since it's a graveyard. Alright, All right, I said I was going to cut this, and I will. So this stuff here is actually nice to leave it out flat. If you're doing camo with an airbrush, but it also is just a mask. It's a very convenient mask for camo. It's also pretty good because you can do a wrap it around trap. It'll be fine, squish it around, and peel it, and do whatever. Nice and loose and squishy, molds easy, is reusable. All the tricks of the trade, you got it. Alright, so I am going to drop a little bit of lacquer thinner in this thing. Now I'm going to turn on, turn on the heat. I'll just run it through first. And then we're going to use this stuff, which is... Uh, acrylic lacquer, color shift paint, it stinks, but it's good. Even looks wild in the cup. And this stuff absolutely needs several coats, but they dry pretty fast. It's super evaporative.
We're going to stand in purple. You do have to run through a lot of this stuff. When it settles, there's only about two to three millimeters of pigment on the bottom of it. I'm going to comb over most of this, but I want to get the eyeball thing that's sticking out that thing, so... Not all I need of that. So with this stuff you need to use a special lacquer thinner. This is not paint thinner. This is not neutral spirits. I don't think. I gotta get some special stuff for it. It also stinks pretty terribly.
after all that, then I put airbrush on. I'll take the paper towel and wipe out my outflow. It's nice and clean, there's not any stinky stuff in there anymore. There's a whistle. Put that paper towel that's got all the stuff you got rid of inside the glove. Tie it off, put it in a proper place to dispose it, not with your regular trash. A tiny little bucket of stuff that I take to recycling that has my terribly painted stuff. I'm going to let this rip for a few minutes. It'll keep clearing the air out in this room. I'll be back.
Right to the touch. We'll leave this guy up on a hook for a little bit. Peel this crap off. Lo and behold, you know, not perfect, but good enough for me. my glasses off again. Can work to put this guy together. torturing viewers with the dulcet sounds of talking through a mask, running the compressor, running the vent, but that is how business gets done. It's super thin, and this stuff is like very evaporative. Um, like I, I feel like if I left that bottle out open, it'd be gone the next day. I don't know how well, I don't want to tilt this too much, but when I was saying there's not a lot of pigment in it, this bottle is at about halfway. That's all the pigment at the bottom. The rest of it is just medium. And the medium is just like, just like you can watch it while it's on there, but I, I agree, like the thinness of the coat is awesome. It's why for priming, it's like authentic hardcore hobbying. <laughs> that kinda, that, that definitely works. I mean, I don't know how, I don't, I don't actually know how hardcore it is, but like, I, I just like to play with stuff. I'm very curious bloke. So now, We got this whole body. Um, I've left the articulation loose on it um, so that when I base them, I've got a little bit of stuff to work with. Oh, I got to dry brush those things too at one point. I had to go back over them in black. It's probably the most hardcore thing about my hobby that I've completely made peace with the fact that the legs are on backwards on one of these. That is like some orc shit right there. It happens. Um, I basically attached the side of this thing in the wrong direction. And it looks fine. One guy's got heel claws. It's a pause. Yeah, it's a... Uh... I have a, a a bit of a consumerist stroke to what I do. It's like, you know what? I'm going to try stuff out, make it work. And some of that's just ordering crap because someone says, hey, it's worth a shot. Like, like this mask, like, I am absolutely sold on it. It took me several tries to get it to work right. Every single time part of it wasn't right, and that's okay. Now I feel like I know exactly where I want to use this crap every time. But I have a lot of stuff to go through. Like I also don't like leaving half bottles of stuff, so I'm just gonna find ways to use even the things that like weren't as superior as some of the other stuff that I picked up. All right, so I will need wastefulness. Take the towel out. This other little dish, I'm gonna add some Pretty strong isopropyl alcohol to it. And I'm gonna use that. I found, rather than masking connection points, I don't care about that. Um, but I found that 99% isopropyl alcohol pulls paint off of just about anything. 
pulled mad layers off of these guys. So now what I do is I just paint. And then when I go to put the thing together, I go, hey, where are my connection points? And I use some isopropyl, and I use a lip gloss disposable little foam thing on the end here, because it actually has a wedged point. And I use 99% isopropyl, just clean the area up where I'm gonna glue things together. Yep, it's that easy. So case in point, this thing, it's all primed in there. Put that on there for a second. It's even got some of the lacquer stuff on it. And then eventually like, it'll come off. It's already going. He's a separate guy to just sort of clean it up a bit. And that is a very gluable spot. And even on small models, you just sort of get in there, you know, with something super tiny. You can even use like the end of a, uh, yep. And it's very strong isopropyl, so it evaporates very quickly also. I just use a regular Q-tip to sort of get in there and scrub around it, and that's good. So, in theory, this is what gets the same thing on this arm. I'll just hit all this, and I'll be pretty good to go. I obviously want to be a little careful not to spill it on other parts of your model that you would prefer be in good shape. But even on small models, I've just, like, dipped a little bit into... Uh, it's a cute, not a cute tip. Uh, a toothpick into some isopropyl just to get some in there. It's just got to sit on there for a little bit. And then. Okay, I'll hit dab more. I'm actually going to hit this guy one more time. Actually, for this paper towel, is going to just straight up be better. Now I got a good connection point. And I didn't have to waste a bunch of time in the process. Like, good enough. Let it breathe a bit. Set that guy down. Do the same thing. That right there. I just have these little monkey dishes that I'm always using and just rotating stuff through. So like my outflow from my airbrush, I'm always dumping into one of these guys, prepping. I actually use this alcohol on my brushes. Not to like clean them, clean them, but as you get paint down near the, wherever it is, I can never remember the name of it. It probably begins with a B. Um, you get paint down to where it connects to the post, like that's what makes your brushes fray. So a quick swish in isopropyl will break the paint up, and then you swish it in water a couple seconds after that, and it just sort of helps. I know it's probably terrible for a nice brush. Like I probably wouldn't do that with a sable brush, but I've only got one of those and I've only used it once. All the rest of my brushes are pretty cheap. And it keeps them alive longer. Especially with all this chrome that I've been painting. That stuff is like super slick ink and it just eeks right up the brush it starts to clog it and fray it real fast. I mean, I do a lot of stuff that is like pretty damaging to brushes. I've been sort of cursed for this, but like 50 brushes for 20 bucks when you're using chrome paint or you're doing a lot of stuff like, uh, I don't know if I have them out here, but like 
the amount of like streaking grime, metallics, corrosion stuff that I do. I don't I don't need a really expensive brush to do that. <laughs> so there are limits. Um, there are limits to those brushes. But at the scale of how many I can go through, like, that's kind of okay. Um, and as my skill goes up, like I did finally buy, I bought one sable brush. And I've used it one time so far. And I mainly just use it for like highlighting stuff because I want to learn how to use a good brush. Hey, what's up, Spawn? That's not quite me. I just, I need, I have a lot of guns. <laughs> Some, someday. Um, but for the job, like, I'm not hunting, you know, caribou. Like, I got a, you know, 22 for taking out rabbits and squirrels. And I, I'm eating rabbit stew. That's a very, that's going to be like a solid, solid model. Um, really cool character that I'm now quite a big fan of. Um, as he features quite prominently in uh, The End of the Death Part 3. Um, it's a very cool pose. I dig it. So this... Try to do this. This thing's still mobile. It is. Okay, so I got a lot of flexibility there. Gonna dry fit this thing in here. And it does slide right in. Uh, I, I mean, at least, at least where I'm, I mean, where I'm at, I finished the end in the death three, like volume three. I don't know if he's the first one. But he definitely is at that time. I don't know if that's the reason um, why he was made champion. But basically, the dude goes out, like, defends a bunch of innocent people. Um, kills a bunch of Death Guard. A little bit sad about, but it was still pretty cool. He is the first one. Okay, sweet. I don't want this guy to be like raising his hand up. The other guy's got sort of arm outstretched. Please give. Be like pointing down. I'll give him a little bit of an up arc. I mean, does the Emperor pick new champions after he's sitting on the throne? Because that would make, like, Sigis women, like, the first and the last. That is spooky. There we go. Ah, okay. Ah, oh, now things are starting to click for me. And one of those guys that the Black Templars chose, I believe, bought it at Hell's Reach. I think. Like right near the end at the uh, sort of Sisters Abbey.
I love it. I love it. I love that it's the fact that like I can now ask ask questions that like at least have some context. Like I've before Twitch, I was pretty decent on Death Guardy stuff. But everything else was like, huh? Keep something under this for just a little bit longer. Just like that, buddy. I mean, that's part of what makes the hobby so good is the legacy and richness of it. And it really is kind of like a lore-wise miracle that most of the lore, like, it's just in the rule books, like, as little snippets of things. And then, you know, to have the Horus Heresy have its full arc and, you know, Siege of Terra being the end of it and get all through that with, like, I don't know, eight grillion books to expand on all of it, really, like, Impressive. Let's give this guy a little loose tooth wiggle. Yeah, he's still setting a little bit. Be patient with him. It's a little tough to tell in certain moments because he's got articulation here too. Sit straight. I remember a battle report in White Dwarf where a Space Wolf player had converted a special Emperor's Champion model. <laughs> It is a very, like, unique part of this hobby that, like, the amount of conversion that happens is, like, really impressive. Which, while, like, crazy airbrushing and chrome and a lot of, like, micro techniques from people that do sports cars models is what I wanted to learn with this orc stuff, I think a lot of what I'm going to do for my Trader Guard army is going to be, the goal is going to be conversion. Conversion, conversion, conversion. And I got plenty of, well, like two units of death core to start converting at some point. I'm going to round that out with a bunch of other stuff, but the nice thing about kill team full sets is that you get other stuff with it. All right. That's going to be good enough. All right. This guy is dry enough to handle for show. Clean that off. Obviously, get some isopropyl on the post. Don't spill it, or it will wipe off paint you expected to keep. Just realized I don't have his shoulder bits on there yet. It's a little bit of a pain. Not a terrible pain, but a little bit. I'll live. I'll get them later. Or maybe I just won't put them on. So this is actually what I find to be like one of the really cool parts of the model. The 
gun arm. Uh, on the other one, it's got belt-fed ammo. Basically, you place it in between the two halves of this when you glue this thing together. There's a little nubbin on the other end where it keeps it stuck in. And no matter what, no matter how you articulate it, in this case, wires, just got stuck in there. Good to go. Pretty neat. This model has a lot of interesting left hand, right hand stuff going on. Uh, hide that there. Alright. freewheeling days. Oh yeah, another imperfection is that the instructions don't tell you that those six holes in there look like a six-shooter drum need to be lined up square with the top. So I'm exactly like one twelfth off. This gun's got a little bit of a lean to it. Every bit of these models have done something a little bit strange and it all kind of comes together in a glorious orky way. I do have to hold it. Let's... Hold it with this arm. I can sip tea while I work. <laughs> can be used in your army to represent your hero. Game's come a long way. A super long way. And still, you know, every edition and codex has its interesting nuanced issues. That is part of what, like, the meta of the game is, though. Um, I have a, a very deep appreciation for games that like change over time, have a shifting meta and all that. Is the amount of like hype around the game when a new edition is coming out. And yes, all that hype is not good. Um, but like th this cycle where like orcs are getting a codex in a few months. Like I'm pretty psyched. I'm pretty curious to see if there's like a build that actually accommodates a lot of what I put together blindly on a funky theme. You know, new models coming out in rotation, all that stuff. It's very vibrant, like it's very mentally engaging. When I got started, it was when 9th edition was on the way out. And my first trip into the Warhammer store, like, Games Workshop dude was like, are you sure you want to buy this? What index, I guess it is for... Uh, but uh, he's like, this edition's almost done. I was like, yep, I just need to learn what a lot of these words even mean. I was like, I don't know what piling in is even about. He's like, all right, we'll be fine with that. I think I asked him if piling in was the same thing as piling on is in Blood Bowl. Yeah, it's a little squirmy. Might give it a little bit more of a push. Don't break it. 
little inward pressure, probably. I think most of what's holding it is the peg. It's not wise. A little bit of pressure here. Should make it stick a little bit better. Allegedly. Alright. Cool with that. The last thing I gotta clean up. I think I should probably paint this head before I put it in there. Nothing else I think I'm good with. Still got some articulation on it. The head though, when it goes in, kind of in for good. Carn effects are awesome. Carn effects suck. Carn effects are mid. Yeah, I should definitely paint that. All I gotta do is chrome up some spots on it. <laughs> With my trusty extra set of hands will I actually hang on to this. Yeah, somewhat. But I don't think I'm gonna completely chrome face this guy like I did the last one. I'll hit the whole bottom jaw. But I've got a little bit of almost glow around the eye. Not a ton. And to be fair, not really intentionally, but I got it. Um so, something to look a little different. I'll hit like the eyebrow and those slats, that lightning. I might actually hit this thing with some ink too. I'll do this one a sort of mix of spots, painted and not. Them a little bit strong metallic spots. Got a little Tomax and Zamot action going here. Enjoy sub-assemblies, no paint mistakes. I wouldn't say no paint mistakes, but fewer is definitely true. I do find a way. I'm gonna hold on to this by hand. It's warbling around a bit, too much for my taste. Yeah, subassembly is something I've, I've got to utilize a little bit more. I mean, with this guy, I I right out the gate like glued his legs on, whereas the first one I didn't. Crimson Guard was such a weird addition to GI Joe. I loved him. Like Tomax and Zamot were like my jam. But I do realize in retrospect that's partially just because I owned them. Yeah, no, you're, you're absolutely right, Max. Like, it does, subassembly heads off a lot of painting yourself into a corner. Yeah, a lot of my mistakes I can fix pretty fast. So Chrome has taught me this stuff is not forgiving at all. Taught me to be a little bit more patient with my painting.
zip kicker? The fact they would take Joe to task with legal ease. Hey, you know. It was a changing era. You couldn't just A team everything anymore. run some operations by the books. Also like the early crossover with Sergeant Slaughter. I was very familiar with because I grew up in Connecticut, the heartland of the WWF. I had met Sergeant Slaughter plenty of times. He would like come by once a year in elementary school and talk a bunch of trash and tell kids not to do drugs. That was really when the toys exploded, though. Ah, we'll do. Brush. Little reprieve. Does that stuff go on first? Uh, spray that instantly dries super glue. Oh, put the piece together, spray zip kicker and pow, instant dry, no haze. But if I've got two parts together, like how does that stuff hit? Or do I like glue each piece, spray it with that and go bam? That's pretty awesome. I had never heard of that. Man, I don't remember Destro getting busted for that, but that's pretty awesome. I had a big place in my heart for Destro as well. He's a pretty cool character. But it was very much the era when, like, things were expanding a lot in terms of toys. Like, the the number of factions needed to just churn out more and more stuff. Like, G.I. Joe went from, like, a reasonably tight cohort to, like, a bunch of different factional things with their own vehicles. All that stuff. Like, uh, that hydroplane boat 
I had that when I was a kid. It was like one of the best gifts I ever got. My parents were actually like super nice with giving me cool crap. Like not constantly, but like Christmas was like a big deal. And that boat was like sweet. And I wouldn't be surprised if it just came down to like, hey, we found out red plastic's gonna be cheap for the next few years because someone figured something out and they're just like, all right, we need a crimson guard. Yeah, I never had the aircraft carrier. Um, shipwreck took so much screen time. <laughs> True. Um, I mean, considering the show was basically just like the sales force of the, of the toys, But they had to build in like all these extra rivalries. And you know they were trying to like just appeal to a bunch of different demographics of kids, what they were into. But like every every toy that had a cartoon with it was suddenly picking up additional extra rivals. Like, uh, like He-Man picked up Hordak. Oh, dude, that boat was so good. That was like an amazingly top quality toy. It, in my case, like, I didn't ever manage to break it. Um, even though it had a ton of moving parts, like all kinds of cool stuff. Like the hydroplanes, there's a lever, I think on the back that made them go like into the boat and then out. There's a missile rack. I feel like it might have had a couple torpedoes in it. Flimsy, but still, like, everything on that was still a lot better than a lot of other toys that were out at the time. <clears throat> like, I notoriously broke toys. Just, like, trying to see how everything worked. Actually, like, technically speaking, I was kit-bashing G.I. Joe guys, I don't know. I mean, it was the old house I grew up in, so I was younger than 10 years old at the time. Because, like, you could stretch them apart and, like, snip that elastic. You snip the elastics in the joints, and then if you could get an elastic back in there, you just, like, reattach all kinds of stuff to it. You know what? My Storm Shadow's got red arms and a weird head. Well, the head had a strange hook on it, I think. If I remember correctly, it's a long time ago. Mm -hmm. It's a really cool toy. that head sit for a couple minutes and we will toss them in I have thought about the 3d printer as like the replacement parts thing for quite some time early on in college uh, a buddy of mine that I was living with he needed extra money and he had uh, this is the early days of eBay he had a bunch of extra GI Joe parts and he found out that people were just selling lots of extra bits and so all he did was just like drop them on top of a photocopier ziploc bag them and sell them he was making a killing at the time for him you think about 3d printing now 
Like if you can if you can get the 3D model for it, which I mean they do. I don't know how good they are, but they do sell things that like probably for items up to well, probably about the size of like a Primaris Marine. They allegedly do a pretty decent scan of them and turn it into whatever file format, FTB or something. Um, like that seems like absolutely the way to go. Like I don't, I don't feel like wholesale just like printing out all my own Warhammer stuff, but like Nerglings to base with, definitely. Um, funny little skulls, like I love the box of skulls that they they sell, um, that Citadel sells. I love it, it's great. Take me a while to go through it, unless I build a corn army. Um, but I just print those out at will. But replacement parts are like key. My um, my Night Tyrant, I uh, off of Etsy, found someone who's just just selling the 3D print of the shoulder piece that connects. And if you have multiple of those, it makes uh, magnetizing the weapons very very easy. Like it's almost built to magnetize. They just don't give you, they give you dupes of all kinds of pieces in that set, except that one thing. Modded weapons for different chapters, absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, I gotta get the inside teeth. Oh yeah, dragon head flamers for salamanders, one hundred percent. Like some some chapters get like some pretty cool stuff. Like Death Guard, obviously, like they don't use flamers, they use sprayers. That is like cool, but if they're and obviously their melee weapons all look squirrely, but like a lot of their bolt guns just look like bolt guns. Like to have a little bit of motif on them would be. Pretty frickin' sweet. Couple little bolts in here that I'll get. Just like just tiny neat little bit. One more once over. No one's gonna see the back of his head, not worried about that. Should be fine. Teeth will cost these guys up. set this guy down for another minute just to dry up so I don't pull any chrome around while I'm setting his head in there oh yeah yeah I like and the rhinos are just totally built for spare extra stuff like the place that I get my I guess for lack of a better term pirated stuff um, like the Huron Blackheart like the grot tanks they uh, they sell uh, door plates and the, the sides of the rhino all have, like, place that's recessed that you can just put whatever thing on there. Like, the sisters gets a special plate for it. Like, a ton of those. If I remember correctly... There. This guy over here. This guy back out. Probably very little paint. I gotta be very careful with this step. Just wanna get lost the inside of this thing. I'm gonna leave that in there for it to soak. Oh, 
burn another one. Here to scrape it up. Get it dry. It's crazy to think about, you know, how long the hobby's been around. Like most toys, you'd never expect anything to, to last, but with Warhammer, you, it's one of the few games that like you start up in your youth and may take into gray haired old age. Like it is also, it is also a toy. I know people might take umbrage with that statement, but there's a lot of classics out there. All right, the only thing I'm really gluing together here is the post. I am gonna scrub a little bit around the base of this, but it's chrome in there and I'm main thing I want to clean up here is the post and I may actually scrape it up a little bit just so that decent contact area like I'll probably just take an exacto to it slash it a little bit your violent dollies great phrase I love it You know what? I lied. I am going to get the inside of that a little bit. There's a little ring in there that can serve as a little bit of extra blue connection points. Just this gear ring that's right around here. That should be enough. Super gentle about it. No one's going to see me. Totally safe. Still gonna be careful, but it is totally safe. Yes, Kim. Thank you very much. Set that aside, get this one more little scrub. I find it absolutely adorable that like, my three-year-old is like now enamored with like me taking pictures and videos of my camera and then we just watch them immediately. She's absolutely obsessed with it. And obviously I have a lot of pictures of my models in between my phone as you might guess, is like pictures of my, you know, violent dollies and pictures of my three-year-old and my, you know, one-and-a-half-year-old. So there's always pictures of my Warhammer crap in between the stuff that I'm trying to show her. And she just says, Daddy's Toys. It's Daddy's Toys. No biggie. Everybody gets toys. Yeah, this thing slides in there. I need a little scooching, which means I don't really need to burr it up much. It's a pretty decent fit. All I gotta do is glue it and squeegee it in there and not have it get stuck when it's in a very in-between spot. Famous last words.
not drag the glue around all over the place. turn. My other guy's pretty straight faced. Uh, he might be turning the other direction. Violent dollies are pretty awesome. So, still quite a bit of work. You fuck. Is there my brother's right now. It's going to be so much fun to just march down the table. They're pretty quick, too, relatively speaking. Things i got to do. Add a lot more chrome to this guy. Add his shoulder pads on. And I can start thinking about basing. Probably will wait till I move. To base them both? Probably. We'll see. I'm kind of whimsical. I might change my opinion of that, like, tomorrow morning. Because uh, I still have these guys to finish. I still have a whole unit. There's not a ton that they need, but, like, there's more detail on these guys to go. And I have three mechs. So there's that. Let's see what happens. I'm going to look up some place to go. Go bomb. To go raid. Because I am going to call it a night. I've done enough. Eight smalls. This place is a war zone. <laughs> they clean this room so much. This entire room is just covered in like empty boxes and stuff. I think I think it's entirely fine to have a bit of enjoyment and call them violent dollies in an endearing way, but like Anyone who doesn't like my hobby, like, please, like, all my friends absolutely adore the fact that I've gotten into this, but like, I've had these friends for decades, uh, and all my friends are nerds, like, that's just straight up, like, the only flack I get is literally jealousy, and I'm like, you know what, you should probably get into it too. Alright, I'm going to raid someone. Um, uh, who are we gonna hit? Who are we gonna hit? Who are we gonna hit? Da, 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 da. <laughs> I, was just look, I was like, oh, this guy looks neat. It was me. Uh, why is that Warhammer? All right, we're just gonna go here. Dark fists. Folks. <laughs> we. All my friends do that too. All right, I'm actually gonna raid out to Shark Fists. Pretty cool name, folks. Thanks a bunch for hanging. Uh, we're getting closer and closer with this Morka knot. Um, still more to paint on them. Still got to get the shoulder pads on. A lot of detail, but uh, it's a good, fun, uh, productive night. I'm gonna raid us out to Shark Fists. Thanks a bunch as always. And we will see you again sometime soon.